Hey, what is going on you guys? Today I thought I'd walk you through on how to do a oil change on your Yamaha R3 or pretty much any bike. It is a real easy thing to do, especially on the Yamaha R3. I thought, you know what? I'll pull the camera out and actually film this time doing it. <laughs> so, first off, what you're gonna need is really simple. You're gonna wanna get yourself a funnel. Pretty thin tip, but not super thin. You also want to get a jug, an oil jug. This has measurements on the side of it. A oil filter wrench. Now you can either have one like this. Um, I decided to get this one for doing it this time. Which here are the sizes for this one and the actual part number if you do want to get this exact one. Last time I just used the three-way claw. You can get in there and, and use that. Or you can just use your hand as well. So you want that, and you also want a 12, 13 mil ring spanner. Uh, you can use a normal spanner, but ring spanner is just better, you get more leverage on it. You also want an oil filter, this is a genuine Yamaha filter. Whatever filter you choose to go with is your choice, I just decided to go genuine Yamaha. And you're also going to want your oil. This stuff is liquid gold. Because I've got a fair few Ks on the bike, I run the fully synthetic stuff. If you're doing your first oil change, they don't recommend it until you've done at least five, 10,000 Ks on it. So you wanna probably stay with the mineral stuff until then, but you know, it's completely up to you. This is just how I do it. And um, you guys can do with it what you will. It's your bike. So I run the Motul uh, 10W40 uh, fully synthetic stuff and it is liquid gold it's expensive as anything this is uh four liters oh and i also forgot to mention you're gonna need a uh, drain tray without further ado guys let's get into doing the oil eh? also having a rag or two lying around um wouldn't hurt too much either just to clean your hands now i don't use gloves i just use my hands like some people get funny about it there's going to be a few things in the way i do it other people may not agree with so just you can either watch the video and agree with it or not you can take it as you will when it comes to the bike i normally have the bike up on a rear stand i don't have i do have a front stand but i just don't have the oggy knobs to actually pick it up at the front or the spools to pick it up at the front so i i just use the rear stand before you even get started you want to start the bike up and get it up to running temperature so have it at least running for five ten minutes at least so it just gets the oil circulating warms up helps it drain a lot easier too i've actually just come back from being on a ride so the bike is well and truly warm for me so i can just go straight into draining it this is nice and simple underneath here you have your sump plug bolt that is a 12 mil so you can just get your spanner on it like so and above that you have your oil filter here so looking in through where the front is there's the oil filter there and your drain plug is just there if you look underneath your bike your drain plug is just on the right hand side of the engine and off to the side there so now you just want to get onto your sump plug bolt and undo it now it is not going to be that loose guys it is going to be bloody tight you're going to have to probably support your hand on one peg and give it a good good uh, reef just don't round it out now once that's done just slowly undo it and just let it run out like so and it'll just run down into the drain tray as you can see you let that do that until it completely runs out you've also got the sun pump washer there which this one seems to be fine you just wipe that off with a rag clean that up so once that has completely come to a drip like that, hardly any dripping out of it, you can wait until it completely stops, but it can sit there doing that for like hours. <laughs> so once it's completely come to that, you want to put your sump plug back in. Ensure that that's clean, obviously around, around the surface there, mounting surface. You don't want anything getting in between it and uh, preventing it from sealing 100%. So you just give it a bit of a clean off. Bit of a clean off, make sure the surface is all clean. And then you put your sump plug back in.
and do that up tight. Now that's not 100% tight, I will go over and recheck that. You can actually use a torque wrench and set it to Yamaha's torque specs if you really want to, but the way I do it is I just do it up tight, make sure it doesn't come out. That is your goal, <laughs> make sure it does not come out. Now next you get onto your oil filter, so you want to get your oil filter wrench onto it. And this will also be tight. And you want to undo this in a counterclockwise direction. See how they start to come undone? Just when I'm undoing it in an anti-clockwise direction, it'll start running out. Like so. It'll run out like so. And just continue to unscrew that completely. And just sit that down in a little drain tray like so. Now what I normally do here is I just check that nut just by hand. Sometimes they do come loose. I know on cars they do. They do come loose. It's just a habit I do. And then you want to get your rag in there and just clean, clean this face so it's completely clean. There's no dirt, debris around it. Do not put any emery paper or anything like that on it. You just want a rag, clean it off like so. You can use brake cleaner or something along those lines if you want it absolutely spotless. But what you're doing is just cleaning that face so no dirt or anything gets in between the new gasket and the machine face which can cause it to leak. So that's all you wanna do. I will continue cleaning this up off camera and then we'll get to installation of the oil filter. As you can see, that face is all cleaned up now. Looking really nice, ready for the new oil filter. Yeah, when it comes to the new oil filter, what you wanna do is you wanna get a smear of oil, just put a thin smear of oil around the actual gasket. Now this is when people are going to crack it with me and I know it's gonna cause a debate, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Some people say fill the oil filter up with oil and it helps the bike prime so it doesn't lose oil pressure. I don't do that. I never have done that and I've never actually had an issue. Uh, the bikes are normally fine, cars are fine and take it from me, I've changed more oil filters than probably half you have in your life. <laughs> Not to sound like an asshole, so I know what I'm talking about, all right? You, you don't have to do it, all right, guys? People just see other people do it, and they go, oh, yeah, you have to do it this way. The bikes and cars are fine. They build up oil pressure. If you want to help it, you can put it in there. It just makes a shitload more mess, and you end up wasting your oil as you're trying to screw it on. So just you can just put a thin smear on there, screw it on, the bike will be fine. So we've got the thin smear of oil. As you can tell, it's a real thin smear. Now we get under here again, and just give that a quick wipe off again, just where the residue is. You are gonna get residue underneath. You're gonna to have to get under there and clean it anyway. And then you just proceed to screw your new oil filter on. Clockwise direction. Make sure it starts, it doesn't cross thread. You do not want to cross thread this for obvious reasons. And just start to do it up. Till it's mated up on the surface. Now, you're gonna to have to get under there and torque it to at least 15 to 20 newton meters. I do them by hand. Just another thing guys, just ensure they're tight. You do not want your oil filter coming off. That is a no-no. The bike will seize, and that's if you don't drop the bike beforehand, because even if the oil filters leak, it goes straight under to your back tire. You'll come into a corner, and you'll end up bloody dropping it. So ensure they're tight, which I'm gonna do now. What I normally do is I do them up by hand. I've got enough strength to do it. So I do it up by hand, and then I get a rag, dry it off, and then go again. And that's the way I do it. I just ensure they're tight. You can use a torque wrench. I'm pretty sure you can use torque wrenches and get in there, do it. Or you can do it with your oil filter wrench, but sometimes the oil filter wrench, you run the risk of damaging the oil filter. So once your oil filter's tight and you've cleaned off the surrounding area, you can actually hit that with brake cleaner. 
I'll continue to clean it up after. And you recheck your sump plug, make sure that's tight. You can put it to the torque spec. If you're not comfortable actually just doing it by hand, just get a torque wrench, find Yamaha specs, and the torque wrench will click once that's actually torqued correctly. You then want to just go around and just wipe off any excess oil. Then what you want to do is come around to the other side of the bike and here is your oil filler. So you want to undo this. Just you wipe that off, that has a little o-ring on it. Make sure this is all clean. Wipe the face of that off with the rag. And you just want to get your new oil, your funnel, put your funnel in there and just tip it into your jug. So you just want to clean off around around the gasket, just around the filler plug and screw that on. Just cap that off and then we'll start the bike. So now you just want to start your bike. You just want to wait for the oil pressure light to go out. Also, while the bike's running, you want to get under there and check for any leaks. If that oil filter is leaking, if for some reason that gasket didn't seal, you want to check that. And you also want to check your sump plug as well, make sure that there's no leaks. You want to make sure that it is not leaking, I'm telling you. Turn it off. You then want to drop it down if it's on any stands or anything along those lines and then recheck the engine oil. So once you had enough oil in it to start it, I started off with two liters to actually start it. After you start it, run it, you then pull the bike over level so it's standing upright. Check it and you will need to top it up a little bit and when you actually check it, the bike's not leaning directly right but you'll see the two marks there. So you've got a mark notch down the bottom and notch up the top. You want it right on the top notch there, like so. It's in between, it's in between the two marks. That's good operating temperature. You don't want it like that. That's too much. The bike's leaning way over to make it do that. This is bringing the bike level. That's it there. Nice on the mark. You want to make sure that's tight. Clean off any residue or anything around your filler plug. Check underneath, ensure that there's no oil leaks and take it for a ride. And if you want to turn out that oil light, I've already done a video on that. I did a video on it last oil change. So I'll um, probably film it again this time and just upload it. Also, if you start up your bike guys and that oil light does not go out, shut the bike off immediately don't keep it running you will damage the engine so obviously if you start it oil light stays on for a bit that oil light will stay on longer like when i first initially started it will stay on longer than normal because the bike needs to actually build up oil pressure but if it stays on any longer you will do it you do damage the engine and if especially if you hear the engine note change and it really starts knocking you've probably already done the damage so shut the thing off and go to a dealership <laughs> and for those who want to know this is the part number for that yamaha oil filter as well obviously guys after performing the oil change make sure you dispose of your oil correctly and same with the oil filter Think of the environment a little bit guys, put it in there as a disclaimer sort of thing. Righto guys, if you liked the video give it a huge thumbs up, go ham on it, it really helps me out. I'm about to go road test this thing, so go out for a ride, I may bring you guys along, it depends on how I'm feeling. And also guys, don't forget to join the ride, subscribe, I'm a, I've made plenty of videos, I've got more coming, so yeah, till next time guys, peace. My hands are oily. You wouldn't have heard that if you wore gloves.